He had a good game going. He had a better game going than I did, but he had a good mother to help him. She helped him in a nice game. I was kind of over on the sidelines. See, I had to get around that game and look over the tracks. Okay, now, here we go on mother again for a second. You said he had a nice mother to help him. Does that mean you did not have a nice mother to help you? Oh, well, I imagine I got a whole lot of nice mothers that would help me. If I would help them, you know, how much would you help yourself? When I asked you uh, why you got married, you said for sex. Uh, That's when I was 20 years old. Yeah. What kind of, yeah, this is funny, what kind of sex life is there for Charles in this prison? Well, I, a bit now and then. Mm -hmm. I try to hide it, not to embarrass other people, but I've been doing it ever since I was 10. <laughs> I get to thinking, here I'm an old man sitting in the cell. That's the damn thing I ever seen, you know. It looks like uh, I grow up, but I really don't know how yet. I'm learning. Yeah. You're teaching me how to grow up. Do you miss women? Certainly. My goodness. Yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of women? Oh, I like them. Yeah, they're nice. They're put together well and everything, and they're soft and spongy. Yeah, they're nice. As long as they keep their mouth shut and do what they're supposed to do. Why do you say that? Because that's what a woman's supposed to do. Keep her mouth shut and do what she's supposed to do? Sure. Well, who taught you that? Well, I don't want to snitch it on me. Yes. You know, you were sentenced to the gas chamber and then they modified the death penalty. Were you happy when that was done? Was I happy when what was done? When you found out that you weren't going to the gas chamber. You're talking about dying. You now it gets me nervous. Why? Did you have any thoughts about something? Was you wanting to go anywhere? Were you happy when you found out you weren't going to go to the gas chamber, Charles? Uh, I knew I wasn't going to go to the gas chamber because I hadn't done anything wrong. You scared to die? Sometimes I feel I'm scared to live. Living is what scares me. Dying is easy. Getting up every day and going through this again and again is hard. See, I'm carrying a heavy thought. See, the thought I'm carrying is very heavy. Like I'm on a football team and everybody's. And I, I'm a little guy. I don't have no. I don't have no uh, home team. You got all the home. I got one. Uh, one cheerleader. <laughs> or one uh, uh, coach. See, you got me at a disadvantage because I'm on your ground. See. So, and this is your street. I reckon you got the cameras and the money and the things. But you can believe me that uh, Bully Osi's had you all on a rib. <laughs> and all the guys that sold you most of that stuff sold you a bunch of things that weren't, uh, weren't real. Not to me. We used to have games when we'd play. On the movie set, we would take on different people. I'd be Riff Raff Rackets. And Steve would be uh, John Jones just come in from Minneapolis and driving the truck. <laughs> And we'd just take other people and play act other people. And then we lost track of who we were. <laughs> and it went off into other dimensions and levels of thought and understanding and comprehension that were beyond most people's minds, functions, computers, data. So um, all I did was watch and learn everything I could from everybody I ever met. Then when I got out of prison, I just walked around. I didn't tell nobody to do nothing. I said, do what you want to do. Do. Don't tell me what to do. I don't like people to tell me what to do. This is a place where they told me what to do all my life. You know, I want to find out what to do for myself, you know. And they did. Not yet. But I was going to take a trade one of these days, maybe learn to be a welder or something. Until I can get to the front gate, anyway. Where people were killed. How did you get involved in that drama? Well, I was born illegitimately.
that put me on the other side of the law. I've been an outlaw ever since I was born. I went to reform school when I was about 10, and I learned to box and cry, and I learned to do all the things that you do in reform school. Then I went to, uh, I escaped there a bunch of times, and I went to prison, and I learned everything that you do in prison. And I talked to all the guys and asked them everything they knew, and they told me all the things they knew. And then I went to the end of it, and then the old man would be ready to die, and he'd say, well, son, uh, sincerity is the best gimmick, remember that. And I'd say, all right, be sincere, that's, that'll win it. He said, that's it. Sincerity and honesty, he said, it'll do it. It'll trick him every time. <laughs> I said, well, sincere and honesty, I never tried that. <laughs> I tried everything else, but maybe I'll try sincere and honesty. So then I looked in the book and it said, the wages of sin is death. Now I figured, well, I don't want to die, so maybe I have been sinful here. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe I'll take a look at my life and say, well, I'm going to change it and start all over. You know, and I know I go to God and I say, hey, man, you're going to forgive me? And he's going to say, what do you do? You forgive you? I mean, what do you come to me for? Forgive yourself, man. Don't be bothering me. You know, and I think, well, he must be a big, mighty God, man. He just, you know, he ain't got time. You got to make an appointment or something, you know. So I see the whole aspect of the whole trip for children to play, you know. And then I get stuck in the game of playing the goat here, or the lamb, or the, or the some other trip. I was a teddy bear, and then I was a, a goofball, and whatever. And uh, what is the real one? Where's the real one? I don't know where the real one is. It's in a nut ward somewhere.